Okay. It started. And as far as I know, it's recording. Go ahead, Co Chair Washington. Okay, this is Joe Washington, and I will bring the meeting to order at this time. It is 12.03 p.m. And I will go ahead and do roll call. Uh, let's see here. Commissioner Cuddy, I. She will not be here today. Um, Commissioner Kabodi Adekai. Commissioner Kabodi Adekai. Commissioner Phillips is on travel. And then Co Chair Washington. Here. And then um, Commissioner Marks. Commissioner Marks. <laughs> he is here, right? I heard him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Commissioner Toya. Commissioner Toya present. Thank you. Commissioner Weathersby. Present. Commissioner White Hat. Commissioner White Hat. And Commissioner Yellowhair is giving a presentation out of state. And then the only other person present that I know of is um, Carla McCord and Council Member Shimoni. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Ahead. Good afternoon. So, Chair Washington. Um, Yes, could we ask um, one of the commissioners to read the uh, land acknowledgement? Any volunteers? Commissioner Weathersby, I'll uh, go ahead and read. Thank you. The Blackstaff City Council humbly acknowledges the ancestral homelands of this area's indigenous nations and original stewards. These lands still inhabited by native descendants border mountains sacred to indigenous peoples. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued contributions. We celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. Thank you. Is there any uh, public comment from any member of the public uh, at this time? So, Chair. This is Adam. Yes. Uh, can I submit a public comment? Certainly. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Great to be here with you, commissioners. Um, really excited about your agenda today. Just wanted to wish everybody a happy Indigenous Commission uh, or Indigenous Peoples uh, Day uh, event. That was that was incredible. Hopefully, everyone had a nice day. And uh, just big shout out to Fawn and all the commissioners who worked really hard on that. I thought that was really successful. Uh, I also wanted to mention um, this. The, Rose, you have to remind me that that event that I went to by the National League of Cities uh, had a discussion about indigenous um, engagement and representation and all sorts of good things. And they've created a tool guide, a toolkit for cities to utilize to really work on representation and all sorts of um, efforts a city can do, but they created a, a guide. So I'll share that in the in the comments section, a link to that. But uh, I definitely thought about the commission and there's some really great ideas in there. But um, thanks for having me and have a great conversation. Thank you, Council Member Shimoni. Any other public comments? All right, uh, that brings us to the approval of the minutes. Um, approval of minutes for September 7th, 2022. Is there a motion to approve the minutes or to approve with amendments? I, Commissioner Toya, will make a motion to approve the minutes from September 7th, 2022. Thank you. 
Uh, is there a second? I will second uh, the uh, motion. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Some of you may be muted. Um, aye. Okay. Uh, anyone opposed? Hey, the motion carries to approve the minutes of September 7th, 2022. Uh, there is no general business, and that brings us to discussion items, uh, the Thorpe Park Annex parcel. Is there a initial presenter on this, or will staff be making? And I will stop sharing, and then I will turn it over to Southwest Decisions with Andy. Good afternoon. Uh, Rebecca is actually going to be sharing the presentation. So thank you, Rebecca. Uh, it's nice to see you all again. We had the pleasure of visiting with you a handful of months ago. So good afternoon, Indigenous Commissioners and Council Member Shimoni. We're really excited to be here. I'll be rolling solo today. My colleague Carrie is off to her family break. So we'd like to give you an update today um, on where we've arrived almost a year of work for the Thor Thorpe Park Annex. It's been an exciting adventure full of uh, lots of community input, and I'd like to give you the process that we went through and also um, where we've arrived. So go ahead and, and change slides, Rebecca. We'll, we'll re-remind re you who the heck we are <laughs> and how long we've been working on this, talk about our goals as we went through uh, specific steps of our engagement process. And again, today we're here to review two draft concepts for consideration for city council and you're seeing it first so i'm excited about that go ahead so this was a big team it included southwest decision resources the row of four photographs in the middle my name is andy rogers it also included wheat design from tucson they're the upper row of pictures they were responsible for rendering the concepts and then our lovely staff from the City of Flagstaff that we worked with. So our job was to facilitate broad community engagement to help design this robust concept for the Annex parcel. Go ahead. Our goals were to develop a community supported design concept, which the City Council will be looking at at the end of this month. And we wanted this process to be robust and transparent within the community and beyond. Go ahead. We always foster multiple methods. We focused on inclusive, interactive, and iterative strategies such that each method built upon the feedback from the previous. This is one of our events here in the building. Um, I'd love to see a show of hands for from any of you that were able to attend any of our on-site meetings. Was anyone there? Daryl, I know you were at least one of them. Anyone else able to make it? Oh, Kara, yes, that's right. Great. Joe, perfect. All right, next slide, Rebecca. So there were three phases, and go ahead and, and click the animation here, Rebecca. There were, oops, that didn't work. Go back. <laughs> there were three phases. We're having some technical difficulties uh, that we approached this. The first phase was called listening and learning, and I'll go through that first. That was the first um, phase. The second phase was conversations and design. And the last phase was re refinement and approval, which is where we are now. So our first phase was really taking a look at stakeholders and having some, some discussions with folks who had expertise on the parcel, knowledge or experience. We also launched one of two community surveys at that time and also hosted two virtual information sessions. I'll go into detail on those now. So the assessment included 41 individuals and we did produce a summary of what we've what we learned from that. That can be made available to the indigenous commissioners if you'd like to see that. And then we did targeted presentations to the following groups. The Parks and Recreation Commission, who we will visit again with soon. The Indigenous Peoples Advisory Council, you all, the Indigenous Circle of Flagstaff, and then we had one meeting with organized athletic groups. Go ahead. From this, again, this was the initial assessment, we learned that 
visions and values of the parcel were as follows. Nature was very important. The existing current, both passive and active recreation was important. Thorpe Park's central location and that it had a family centered atmosphere. And then when, when we began to ask about potential programming, these were some of the things that came about. The Indigenous Community Cultural Center, court sports such as pickleball, the possibility of relocating the dog park and additional community event space. Go ahead, Rebecca. We also throughout the project had an active project website and an active Facebook page as well. We also sent several targeted specific emails throughout the process. I mentioned this before, but we also had two virtual information sessions. These were recorded and are still posted to the website. We had very good, um, very good participation in those. We had over 200 registered participants and we really wanted everyone to get on the same page by understanding the history and the background of the parcel. There are some city guiding policies such as ordinance 425 in place there and we wanted to let them know and invite them and invite them to the collaborative approach ahead. We hope some of you were able to make those as well. Seems like a long time ago. At that time we also launched the first of two community surveys. The first one was using Google Forms because we wanted to embed nice pictures within it. It was open to all community members for six weeks and we received over a thousand responses, which from my understanding is very good for a city survey. We subdivided, you can see in this picture here, we subdivided the parcel just to get kind of a closer look at it to ask folks what kind of programming would you like to see on the parcel? Go ahead, Rebecca. We also asked them their values. If, as you recall, we had asked key stakeholders and these targeted presentations what their values were. And it was interesting to find out that the community as a whole was consistent um, with some of the early interviews that we did. Nature and indigenous values were very important as they were with key stakeholders. But the community, again, this is the thousand responses, also mentioned that walkability and bikeability was really important. Again, the central location and opportunities for angling as well. The next one is about key programming. So you can see here that there are a few that are highlighted and these are programming interests across the entire property. There were about 30 that came forward and those in sort of the tan highlighted color are the ones that the community found most important at that time. Athletic courts, thank you, Rebecca. The ICCC, community event space of some kind, gardens, open air markets, outdoor amphitheater, kind of the same as event space, and a performing arts or outdoor pavilion. And I think that's it. My little window's in the way on the bottom. Let's see if I can move that. Can't move that. That's Whoops. all, Andy. That's all? Yep, that's all of them. No, I mean, that's all the highlighted ones. Oh, Sorry. okay. <laughs> For some reason, I don't have the shared screen anymore, Rebecca. Did you guys lose it? Or can you still see it? Oh, I got it back. We okay. Can still see it. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Shimoni, you have your hand raised. Thank you, Andy. Uh, am, am I able to engage and ask a question? Sure. Cool. I wasn't sure that was a, any like overstep or anything, but uh, quick question. Um, what did where did housing rate on these things? I, I'm not seeing housing being discussed much here. <laughs> yeah, that housing. And, yeah. Right, housing did come up. Um, the way that we, I'm trying to remember the way that we asked the question specifically, and Rebecca back me up on this one, but housing did come up. Um, I'm looking on here and you'll see it, it plays out. There it is, she highlighted it. Mixed housing and development is right there under interpretive trail. So in this case, it's on there. Um, and it, but we highlighted those, I forget that more than 100 people were interested. So we'll learn more about housing as we move forward into how the open ended questions from survey two came about. And I would say that over time, it was increased in interest over time. Does that answer your question? Okay, very good. It yeah. does. And Andy, Andy, remind me on the slide a, a while back when you, when you talked about the commissions you engaged with and the stakeholders, was housing on that list, like the housing commission? We didn't talk to the housing commission we did speak with the city housing lead as well but not the housing okay. commission rebecca okay. do you 
add to that in terms of conversations you had, but we did not have a conversation with them. No, we're okay. good, Andy. Great. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Rebecca. You're Absolutely. So the second phase is the conversation and design, and this is when we held two on-site design sessions to begin taking the information from the key stakeholders as well as the initial survey and saying, what do we want this place to really look like? So go ahead, Rebecca. So we had two design sessions. The first was in April and the second was in June. And the intention of the first session was really to get to know the parcel. It was a kind of an open air feeling. We were fortunate enough to have food trucks at both events and the community was invited to walk around the parcel and then also engage in a build a park exercise, which I'll talk about in a little bit. From that, again, iterative, this belt built into design session two, which is when we had the opportunity to review three designs that were an output of all of the work that had gone into this. So Wheat Design was able to put these into three concepts of which I'll show you in detail in just a minute. So the first one, like I said, there were outside stations. We reviewed the survey results similar to what you saw a minute ago in terms of program activities, visions and values. And then we had this build a park exercise. Our uh, colleagues over at Wheat Design put together the elements that the community found important. And we had tables of which people would come in and spend about 20 minutes at, and then we would er take a photograph and erase it. And then the next group would come in and build a park again. And so people had the opportunity to understand what was on the parcel, think about complementary and appropriate uses, and again, use the pieces that the community had previously identified as important. And it was a really fun exercise. There were children there. Um, there were probably, uh, I think I say that it's an additional slide, but we had well over 100 people attend this first event. Go ahead, Rebecca. Just some photographs from that. You can see here, everybody working together. Each one of these were facilitated. There was some vivacious discussion at all of them. As you can imagine with this parcel, not everyone thinks it should be used for the same thing, but we tried our best to work through that. I hope that some of you got to help build a park. It was really fun. Go ahead, Rebecca. So of these, we're getting close to the first set of, of concepts, and the first set of concepts had some common elements across all of them. All of them had the Indigenous Community Cultural Center that's been supported from the beginning as very important. They all had communities and orchards, some sort of community or performing of art, art space, and well as well as open air markets. So again, you'll see these elements across the three diagrams I'm about to show you. This was the first. This was back to nature. Open air emphasis enhances the ICCC as a centerpiece. This one had the largest hardscape event space, had outdoor classrooms, but really the, the notion behind this is that it had the most natural back to nature kind of feel. You can see here that there aren't any courts of any kind on this one, even though that was identified as important because the next one, <laughs> go ahead, Rebecca, was centered around that. The designers told us they need to be different enough for people to actually take a look at what they want so that the final elements can come together in the later designs, which you will see today. This one was designed with active recreation in mind and intergenerational play. You can see dog parks, you can see pickleball courts, big play areas, a skate park. Again, the ICCC is a centerpiece to this one as well. That one also had a fitness loop with some exercise stations, I think, around the whole thing. Yeah, so this was exactly a half mile and then there was fitness loops around it. Go ahead. The last one in this first round was something for all. This one also highlighted the ICCC as a center space, community gardens. It had this pollinator garden and ethnobotanical path. This one put a bike pump track on the west side a skate park, and it also included seven units of employee housing. So one of the three did include housing as it was brought up as important. Go ahead. 
So then we moved into more conversations and more design. We launched a second survey and had a second design session in July. At, during that time, we reviewed all three concepts. At the uh, session, they rated these concepts from I really can't imagine this here all the way to I love this. So again, they were reviewing the three concepts. I can't imagine it. I really love it here. We also asked them, well, what do you like about it? And what would you change? That resulted in over a thousand open ended comments, which we'll talk about here in a minute. This was sort of what we were up with up to. We've got children in there working. Full disclosure, that's my daughter and I gave approval to put her picture in here. <laughs> this was the data sheet that we used. The folks came to the tables and reviewed each concept, told us what they liked, what they would change. And then we took a look at that data out of this design session. The survey was almost identical to this design session number two for those in the community that could not make it. So it was a virtual way to see each three designs and rate them and provide your comments. That survey was open for five weeks and had 631 responses. So the last phase, which is where we are now, we have round one, round two, comments on these three designs, where do we go from here? We spent time data refining the data and sending it through a myriad of coding exercises. We will be going to city council for review and approval, but we're here first. We'll be with the Parks and Rec Commission, I believe it's next week. We also just yesterday released a little bit of a glimpse to the public on the Facebook page as well as the website saying that it's out, it will be going to council, but first through you all and please join us. Out of this, there have been two concepts, which will ultimately be um, probably selected as one and hopefully adopted in November. So we'll go a little bit more about this phase now. Go ahead and switch, Rebecca. So the final concept ended up being a combination of all three of the initial ones. Um, there wasn't any clear winner when we looked at Back to Nature, Family Fitness and Fun, and Something for All. Something for All did have an edge, but certainly statisticians would say it was not significant. <laughs> we took all of the open-ended data and put that through coding. We had 1,400 open-ended answers. And then the planning team met for review to look at the coding outputs and reports. And again, all of this data is available as well if you would like to see that. Breaking it down even more. So when we got to these final concepts, of which there are two we're going to look at today, elements common to these concepts included community gardens, ethnobotanical gardens and orchards, event space, the fitness loop, the ICC with CCC with ceremonial space associated with that, market space, pickleball courts, a play area, and then there's a combination skate park and pump track. Turns out you can make one thing when multiple wheels can use it. So we're going to uh, soon take a look at those final concepts. Go ahead. Final draft concepts. Apologies for the circles here. Um, this is supposed to be animated and something happened. So we'll just walk through it. First, we'll highlight the ICCC. It's center. And Rebecca's got her cursor on it there. This is, as you recall, the historic building. And then there's traditional ceremonial space on the east side of that building. Directly to the south and leading up from the parking lot is a big area of orchards and um, ethnobotanical gardens and sort of a green area space, which leads someone from the parking stalls up to the Indigenous Community Cultural Center. North of the community center has outstanding views, if you recall. <laughs> um, so this could be used and is currently, in, in this concept, is an indoor-outdoor flexible event space. As we move to the west, we have six pickleball courts, 22 parking stalls, and then a vegetative buffer on the south side which leads us to some indoor and out indoor basketball courts. As you recall, if you've been on site, this is a current large garage, but it's big enough to fit some three on three courts inside of it. Next to that, 
and associated with the current sustainability office is a community garden, a play area to the southeast, and then back to the southwest, there's this skate park and pump track. To the west, in the buffer area, the consideration of the relocation of the, of the bark park. My understanding, and the city can fill you more in on this, but it becomes also a combination ice rink in the wintertime, which is not good for dogs or humans. <laughs> and then around this whole property, the community did suggest that the half mile fitness loop was something they really liked. Also woven through the center of the market is, is through the center of the property is space for open air markets. So this is concept one. And then keep your eyes affixed. And one thing is going to change when we move to the next one. And Rebecca is highlighting that down there back and forth. The 56, 55 parking stalls in the next slide, concept 1B. This, the parking is reduced and city employee housing is added there. So concept 1B, and you can now, this is identical to concept one with one exception, and that exception is city employee housing in the southeast corner. So I'm just gonna pause for a minute and let you all really take all of this in because those obnoxious circles aren't on there anymore. Feel free to ask a question if you'd like. The, um, one thing that we heard very loud and clear, especially from indigenous voices, was the importance of maintaining vegetation, which is one reason why the um, the west side, the buffer area, the consideration was to leave that in a more open place, possibly a bark park. But you can see over here that there's nothing that's large and hardscaped. Like for example, the skate park is not over there or the pickle bar pickleball courts are not over there. Um, and it could still serve for a picnic area for, you know, especially down in this southwest corner. Okay, Rebecca. That, I feel like we need to go back now, but that really does conclude kind of the process of where we've come from over the last year from the initial key stakeholder discussion. Some of you, thank you, and it, from the past and, and helping us highlight the importance of the ICCC. It's been carried from the beginning and we'd really love to hear your thoughts and questions about this process um, along the way. And Rebecca, do you wanna add anything at the end? I think these folks are probably familiar with where this goes from here, but would you like to add, or Rose, please, <laughs> um, just reflections on the process and where we go from here. Well, um, thank you, Andy, for that presentation. And thank you, Indigenous Commission, for allowing us to present here with you today. Um, in, in a way, this was kind of a dry run for our presentation to the City Council. We anticipate it being very much the same presentation that you received here, as well as what we'll present to the Parks and Rec Commission next Monday. Um, we are honored that we're able to present this to you first. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, just looking forward to any discussion. Rose, would you like to add anything? Yes, um, I wanted to just to say and really encourage our Indigenous Commission and those um, members that are attending from, um, from Indigenous community to to please share your thoughts. Um, I think it's important to know, you know, whether you're encouraged by what what the public has has supported so far. Um, and I guess I also have a question for uh, Rebecca. Um, do you need um, the the commissioners to know if they should? Support a recommendation, or is this, or is this really just an information session? Um, it would be wonderful to take the feedback to the city council. Um, so if there is support for this or not, um, if we've missed the mark, I think that would be good to know as well. And um, 
that would be, will we plan to share uh, your feedback as well as the Parks and Rec Commission's feedback uh, to the council on October 25th. Rose, I'll let you um, queue up the hands. It seems. Okay, um, Commissioner, <laughs> to Commissioner Toya, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, I do. And um, this is in regards to the city employee housing. Um, I might have missed that somewhere within this process, but um, that part of the um, plan is very new to me. So I'm just curious as to how that was um, produced to be a part of the plan. Thank you. Rebecca, would you like me to highlight how some of the open ended? So um, the op once we asked um, the community to go a little deeper, and tell us what they liked and didn't like. It became very clear that there is interest, um, at least in some way, to include employee housing. So that part of the coded data became more clear than it originally was in the beginning. Um, although it was, it was, it's always been part of the dialogue. Um, I think you know it, this is one of the most polarized discussions here. There are people that really believe that you know, and there's. The, the community, there's currently, you know, recognition that there's not enough housing. So in the end, it was a decision of the team to include these two concepts, which were identical, but with this one piece. And so, uh, Commissioner Toya, I would just say that the community spoke in terms of their interest in having some amount of community housing along the way, and a decision was made by the team to go ahead and include that for city council discussion. Would you add and anything, Rebecca? Yeah, I, I would just like to add, we we felt that the comments that we received were pretty evenly split mm -hmm. as well. And so we didn't feel like we had clear direction from mm -hmm. our process of whether to include it or not. And it really feels like a policy discussion um, that the city council should have and give us direction on. So that's why we provided, we were hoping to be down to one concept, quite honestly. Um, but we did a one and a one B so that it, it cues up this conversation, the policy discussion with city council. I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Toya, does that answer the question? Uh, yes, it does, but it also, um, for me, it kind of opens up a door to other concerns that I have, and I only speak of that because I do work with a population, and that's our Indigenous unsheltered relatives population, and so when I see a, um, <clears throat> a um, housing, anything housing that's um, doesn't reflect helping um, the population I support. It, it's concerning to me. So that's my comment. Thank you. Rose, might I be able to explain why we ended up with city employee housing very specifically on here? Would that sure. help? Yeah. Um, the reason that it's very specific about city employee housing is that the current zoning of this property is public facility. That's the only kind of housing that's allowed within that zoning. So unless we did a rezoning of the entire property, um, we wouldn't be able to do things differently there. Um, the other part and the reason we feel it's important for City Council to have this discussion is there are current ordinances about the property that don't allow housing at all, mm -hmm. but they could be, those ordinances could be um, changed if council wants to direct staff to go down um, that path. So Commissioner Toya, I hope that helps explain why it's so specific to city employee housing and, and not something else. Okay, yes, that helps um, a little for me to better understand. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Jobs, your next. Oh, we can't hear him. Hmm. 
I don't know where he went to. I know he's trying to speak, but his audio is. I I'll I'll um put a, I'll put something in the chat box real quick. Let's see, hopefully he can ask his question there. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and while while we're doing that, we'll go ahead and go on with um, Commissioner Whitehouse. Hi, uh, can you hear me OK? We yes. can. OK, great. Just wanted to make sure. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so I um, and I have a, a vision disability, so the contrast on this document is very bright um, and I can't see the I can't read the labelings of all the different sections that you pointed out, though I can kind of you know, make out a map in my mind. Is there another document available that has the labeling and maybe a darker contrast lettering, like black instead of white? Um, there is not. However, <laughs> this thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. Um, we can make that available because uh, we need you to be able to see it. <laughs> um, does it help? Does it help? Rebecca, can you really, really zoom on your screen? I know that doesn't help with the color, but maybe that if does the size, is that influenced at all? Uh, un unfortunately, in my case, it doesn't really because it's okay. just the contrast is it's all bright, so I can't really okay differentiate um, between a lot of the colors. Okay. <laughs> but thank you. Um, but that, that was just <laughs> one thing. That's yeah. just one thing. Um, yeah. um, so keeping, you know, that in yes. mind, um, visitors with disabilities, I didn't really hear a whole lot about how they would use this space. So you talked about a play area. Is that um, going to be built so that children who have um, limitations in one way or another where they have to be in a wheelchair or maybe they can't um, interact to the same level as other children. Has that been taken into consideration? And same goes for, you know, just other spaces in general, um, visitors in wheelchairs, um, uh, people with low vision who have to walk from ground spaces to sidewalk spaces. Um, if we have elderly visitors, is it what the distance from the parking stalls to maybe what would be more of the popular spaces like the cultural center? Um, I wonder if those types of things had also been taken into consideration when creating this layout. I will say that I can hear Rebecca right here on my shoulder right now, and she probably incorrect me where I'm where I'm wrong, Rebecca. But I want to make sure everyone knows this, that this is a concept only, and mm -hmm. these types of things. Thank you. I wrote them all down. These are the types of things that will be discussed at great detail once we move past concept. So okay. um, thank you. I wrote them all down, and I'm sure there's a whole list of additional ones as well. We'll start with getting you a map you can read. <laughs> I apologize for that. And then, um, yes, any and all of those comments to make sure that if this concept comes to implementation, that those things are absolutely taken, um, taking forward as very important. Rebecca, mm -hmm. did I channel you? <laughs> you? You did, thank you. And I would add. <laughs> Good. Yes, and um, I would add that those are all very important things to our division, of course, the city as a whole, um, but certainly specific to parks, recreation, open space, events, elements. Um, those will all be very important in the design discussions. And um, I will point out um, again, thank you very much for letting us know that you can't, um, be, you're not able to see this. Um, that's great for us to know and apologies for that um but there is a circular drive and so for those of you that can see um we did include kind of past the parking stalls this circular drive so this is intended to be either supplies and materials drop off or like a if you're setting up for a market but also certainly um dropping off uh, anyone that would like to 
um, start their journey a little bit closer to the ICCC or um, the sustainability offices, for example, there are also access points here. Um, if you can see where I'm pointing, um, Aztec Street still comes along to the on the west side and there um, may be entrances in from there and there's additional parking on the north side as well that would be closer to the event um, or the flex space. So, um, but uh, that said, all of this will um, be designed with inclusion and universality, if that's a word um, <laughs> in mind. If it's not a word, I just made it one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, just keeping in mind, you know, using other senses instead of just relying solely on vision and the ability to physically participate. Yes. When you don't thank have limitations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So Chris's questions are in the chat box. I think they are pretty specific to you, to city staff. So I'm going to go ahead and say, go, Rebecca. <laughs> can you see those? I can. Let me just, I'm going to pull them I'll back. Oh, thank you, Rose. All right. Chris's question is, I will ask my question on the chat. The city employee housing is a city policy issue, but I'm a little concerned about the parking that would be lost if it's built. Can the public use the big parking lot off the northwest corner of the parcel and access events that way? And does the city have plans for the former Bark Park area? Is it is it conceivable that city employee housing be built there? And then he says, also, let me add, overall, I love this concept. I love the way the ICC, uh, ICCC is surrounded by natural space, gardens, et cetera. OK, Rose, can you take me back to the first question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. Um, let's see. The first question is about the parking lot. And um, he said, can the public use the big parking lot off the northwest corner of the parcel and access events that way because of um, maybe the parking space is being taken by the housing that's being that might be go there? Great, thank you. So let's pause there. Um, actually, one again, we come back to that design idea that as we get into design, we can start. Um, th this is just a concept, and as we get into design, some of these things might meld a little bit to take advantage of, you know, this this just tells us what are the most important elements to be there. They might end up moving around a little bit. One thing that Amy and I actually just recently kind of talked about was can we work to expand this parking lot to the northwest because we know parking will be a concern. Um, so as we get into design, those kinds of things will be explored. So absolutely, this parking lot to the northwest to address that question specifically is already a public parking lot um, and can be used by anyone accessing these areas. That said, it fills up quickly when we have um, sports tournaments or other things going on. Um, so that's why I wanted to recognize that that we know that we'll have some challenges with with parking. Um, in addition, if the council wants to move forward with city employee housing in this area, um, we had briefly discussed there are some concepts out there where parking might be for the housing might be underneath um, or incorporated into the housing area itself without um, without those living there needing to park um, in the park parking lot. So all of all of those details are to be to determined. Um, Rose, can you read me the next question, please? Uh, yes, and he says the city has planned. Does the city have plans for the former park park area? Is it conceivable that city employee housing be built be built there? So that's an interesting concept. I will say it's a drainage area right now, and that's why it does not serve well as the existing bark park. 
one idea and really our parks maintenance team uh, when we went through the build a park exercise with them they really requested that you know and and uh, um many of our bark park users have been asking us and our commission this for years to relocate that bark park to an area that's not a drainage because it is uh, hazardous if we're able to relocate that, then the existing one, um, one concept that we had come up with was um, additional parking. Again, parking is already an issue in this area, especially when we have tournaments. Um, so additional parking, which would be able, we'd be able to construct and deal with the drainage problems at that time. Um, Housing is an interesting idea that um, I'd love to to talk with our team a little bit more about that. And thank you for for bringing it up. Yeah. And then that was the last of his question. The other one is that he just loves the concept <laughs> and the way uh, the um, the indigenous community cultural center is surrounded by natural space and gardens. We have another one, um, Commissioner. Weathersby has her hand up. Thank you. Um, I wanted to first say, um, yeah, I appreciate the intentionality and, and the and the time that you all have spent um, in really um, asking the community um, what's most important. Um, I had the same, um, not same, but similar concerns as uh, Commissioner Whitehat um, for our relatives who um, find themselves now in a um, maybe with different access um, and, and abilities. And um, Flagstaff um, doesn't have a lot of areas that have um, really ways for folks who have different abilities to get around. and. Um, just in thinking, you know, that there's the 15 foot path and the 10 foot path, just kind of wanting to know a little bit more about, you know, as as this is a concept, um, how we're going to make sure that our folks with um, different abilities are able to um, utilize that space. And also in thinking about inclusion um, and inclusive language, I just uh, want to share a gentle reminder that um, stakeholders isn't necessarily the most appropriate um, term. So could we use something, um, you know, of, uh, you know, partners or, um, you know, folks who are who have are invested in the in this um, idea or um, concept um, in, instead of utilizing um, colonial language like that, especially when we're sharing it out with the community and inviting our indigenous relatives to be part of those conversations. Um, and um, yeah, th those are just some of the things that that I um, noticed as I was looking at the, um, the what you had sent um, in the email. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much um, for your honest reflection on that, and we will make that change absolutely 100%. Appreciate it. Those are all the hands I have that I see. And then so I, we can turn it back. To, oh, there's one more. Um, commissioner, not Commissioner. <laughs> Council member Shimoni. I wish I was a commissioner. <laughs> um, <laughs> Andy and, and Rebecca, thank you for the presentation. That was really, really cool. It, was, and it sounds like that was a really inclusive and engaged uh, effort. I really appreciate the commissioner's questions and comments. Uh, commissioner um, Toya, I agree with you in regards to housing, and I'm curious to see what we can do to uh, serve other populations other than city employees. But um, yeah, housing was definitely a big priority to me coming into this. But um, I really do like the plants and appreciate them. I, I'm really curious, um, the building, the the Indigenous uh, Community Center, Cultural Center, we're building that from scratch, correct? Okay, is that an existing building? Yes, it's an existing historic building. It's a huge, beautiful stone building with lots of potential. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I know which one you're talking about, of course. Okay, that, that makes sense, okay. And then I was just thinking about the entrance ways and just having a lot of intention 
uh, mm -hmm. through an indig indig indigenous lens in terms of, you know, the way it's laid out, the way it's set up. And then also thinking that people might be coming from the other side, the other, you know, parking areas, uh, just making sure that they have maybe a, a direct way to get in that isn't too cumbersome to come around by foot, right? And then I was wondering, um, you know, things like, you know, what if the commissioner's like ideas, just thinking, trying to think outside the box, you know, so I'm thinking about a sweat lodge, you know, would that be appropriate? Is that something or, or other just, you know, things like that, that might be appropriate. Um, if, if that would be of desire for the group, for the commissioners. And then I was thinking, you know, obviously integration of bicycle parking, maybe even a bicycle work stand with the tools that are attached. We have those around the city. Uh, it could be a cool way to give people the ability to empower them to fix their own bikes. And then um, something I really like is outdoor workout facilities. So if people wanted to just walk up and exercise, there's a bunch of different ways to do that with outdoor workout facilities. So I think that'd be a good thing to add. And I think that's all my comments at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Rose, did you want to reflect any of um, when, when yeah. Council Member talked about the sweat lodge? We had lo a lot of conversations about the we possibilities did. with your insights on the traditional ceremonial space. Yes, we did talk about a lot on that, about the uh, maybe a Hogan structure or some sort of sweat lodge that can be utilized um, not just as cer ceremonial places, but also as a teaching tool, especially to our youth. Um, so those are a lot of things that are going to be maybe, um, as far as I understand it, further on when planning what actually will happen, where the entry um, areas are going to be, um, those kinds of things are going to be more in the design phase versus the concept phase. So just wanted to let you know that those are all talking points that have been a mix in from the very beginning. Thanks, Council Member Shimoni. Also, um, so we're coming to the end of our time and I want to give some time to um, people who are wanting to um, make this some sort of recommendation, a you know, some sort of support. Um, this is where we need to get that done. We have one more person I'd like to give a little bit of time to is Commissioner Marks. And now we've got to go into that phase of making sure that the commission is um, needing to do what they need to do with, uh, in, in helping this process move forward. Commissioner Marks. Okay, thank you. And again, I appreciate uh, those of you presenting and pulling this together. It was, an, it was a really good presentation and I did want to commend you for reaching out to our dormitory because I know that our students there, um, I want them to feel that they have a voice in there. I know that several of them have been dropping off notes, having shared the concept one and concept, our concept one B and concept one A, um, have been dropping off notes. So I'll have to get those to you um, with their with their opinions and, and feedback on that. I was wondering about the open market and um, what kind of space is being organized around that and then were there considerations to the contrast of our participants that would go to the pickleball and then how that would, what that kind of interaction would look like with the uh, Indigenous Community Cultural Center and the peoples that would be in that space. Um, were there things that, is there anything that you could share with us that might have been included in the, in the research or the drafting of this document? Andy, you'll need to unmute. I'm sorry. Ticking and it was loud. Thank you for muting me. <laughs> um, we did have early conversations and frequent conversations about compatibility of, of, you know, programming and, and spaces. Um, as you, And as you can imagine, um, everyone has a different viewpoint on that. Certainly the team took those things in mind. Um, 
you know, I think there's a lot of currently there's there's vegetation between the two, but there's a lot of flexibility for for a separation. We certainly don't want activities at the ICCC and loud sporting events. And so I, you know, I, I think the team is really open to a lot of continued dialogue about how to buffer that. We had so many conversations about so many things. We talked about a big, beautiful, like concrete mural wall at one time. And the thing is, is I think there are a lot of ways to mitigate sound that we haven't even thought about yet. And so I think, you know, Rebecca, back me up on this. But I think once we get to the des true design phase, the 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 options are sort of limitless in terms of how to make sure that those two things could be compatible if they end up again, if they end up in those exact spaces. Obviously, the building's not moving, so we do have that. Yeah. Rebecca, did you want to add anything there? No, those are all um, absolutely in design considerations. I, I will just point out that we did make a concerted effort to buffer mm -hmm. um, the active sports areas as much as possible using vegetation so it looks more natural. Um, and I'll leave it with that. Yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, Co-Chair Washington, we're going to move it back to you. Um, I think we need to ask for that last item of um, to to move this. Okay. Is that uh, are we being asked to um, make a a motion and? Um, is that where we are now? Rose. If that's the way you want to do it, that's fine. Um, I think it's just it just needs to have some sort of recommendation made um, okay. as to how we of how the, the, our commission supports it or not. Um, so whether it be concept one or concept one A. Um, is this correct, uh, Rebecca? It's con just to be clear, though, it's concept one and concept one B <laughs> for notes purposes. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. OK, I think that it, it would probably be uh, best to, to have it in a motion form. Is there. Does anyone uh, any of the commissioners want to make a motion regarding that uh, concept one concept one B? This is Commissioner Weathersby, just to clarify, 1B is the one with city employee housing? That is correct. One has just parking, 1B has parking and city housing. Uh, Commissioner Marks, you have your hand up. Yes, I would like to motion that and I'm reading the notes that students have given me. Um, I would like to motion that we move to approve. 1A that has more parking space and provides opportunity for more natural environment. And I'm basing my decision on youth recommendations um, in the notes that they gave. Very good. Is there a second to that motion? So just to be clear, that's one, that's concept one, right? Not one A, but one. Correct. And then there's one B. Okay. Yeah. So this is Commissioner Toya, and I like to second Commissioner Mark's motion at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, the motion has been seconded. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed uh, signify by saying nay. OK, the motion carries. Um, the commission is recommending uh, concept one. All right, commissioners, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your feedback and thank you for um, just listening through the whole thing about the uh, the presentation regarding the two concepts and where and how um, 
uh, Andy and her team came came to be at this point to this point, as well as uh, the Parks and Rec um, staff, as all and uh, all the people who participated in in supporting the very um, important aspect of what the Indigenous Commission had asked for, as well as the Indigenous community members um, in Flagstaff and surrounding <clears throat> surrounding areas. So I really appreciate your time. Um, that is all on our agenda. And um, the only last one is um, let me share again for 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 that state. So this is all we have left, um, Co-Chair Washington. Uh, informational items. Uh, are there any informational items uh, from any of the commissioners to from? The only thing I want to add here is uh, is that I really want to thank the commissioners that were there to carry out Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I want to say thank you to Commissioner Toya for just taking control of, on her part and just um, making that happen. I really appreciate that. Also want to thank um, Commissioner Marks for just um, taking control of his piece as well with the youth and, and just get making sure that their voices are heard. I just so appreciate that. And then for all the commissioners that were there, Commissioner Kariai, who was kind of, I helped, I asked her to oversee things. So, and um, while being on sick leave and everything, I just wanted to just make sure that I just wholeheartedly thank for all the commissioners for their hope and their input and everything regarding that day. Yeah, so much. You're most welcome, Rose. It was truly an honor and I want to say that um, I definitely am very grateful and honored to have been there and to support our relatives, our community, our city officials, and our mother and our father son that allow us, and especially our ancestors who've gone through hardship and battles for us to just be here to make all this good change for our Selves for our community and for our people. Asquilly, thank you. I hear you, sister. I hear you. <laughs> okay, if there's nothing else, uh, we will adjourn the meeting at this time. And and thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Marks, did you have, are you saying bye? Or? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I wanted to ask one more thing of okay. our, our presenters. If there's an opportunity to help shape what that traditional space looks like, I would encourage that we provide the opportunity for our youth who are going to inherit that space and our elders to be participant to that to help shape what that looks like. Um, I think that way you're getting the most appropriate and a more accurate uh, organization around what that looks like. And if you need help, um, with pulling those two bodies of people together, please let me know. I will let you know, and I will <laughs> if we if we continue to be part of it um, moving forward. So thank you so much, Daryl, and thanks for bringing their voices forward. I hope they had fun building the park. Did they build the park, or did they just give you comments? They they did both, and they oh. enjoyed it. Um, I have a few pictures that I'm working on getting to you. Great, thanks so much. And. If I could just address that, um, I, that is absolutely essential, Commissioner Marks, and we look forward to working with you and the rest of the commissioners, as well as other, our other um, Indigenous organizations. Um, I, I think you will all be instrumental in probably leading the effort um, in what the Indigenous Community Cultural Center looks like for the future and the space around it. Awesome. 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 <laughs> Thank you. So we will adjourn the meeting at this time. Thank you for, for coming, everyone. Thank it you. It is now 107, 107 p.m. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. You too, Rose. Yes. Bye, Andy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all.